painting your gun is an easy, inexpensive, and a great way to personalize your gear. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to spray paint your gun. So stay tuned. As I said earlier, spray painting your marker and painting your marker is an easy, inexpensive, and great way to personalize your gear. If you've ever seen a bunch of renters standing around a table trying to figure out which marker is theirs, you know exactly what I mean. Now, I also have a disclaimer. If you plan on selling your marker in the near future, I wouldn't recommend painting it because painting your marker often will decrease the resale value. But it also, if you do plan on keeping your marker, it definitely feels like a more personal touch. So when you're thinking about spray painting your gun, you have to ask yourself a few questions. One, why do you want to paint your gun? And then what do you want to paint it? Do you want it to blend in? Do you want it to stand out? Do you want to use stencil patterns? Do, how do you want it to look? These are things that you want to do because as you plan for it, you want to make sure that you get the end result. A little bit of planning will go for a long way. Here's my thought process. I wanted to paint my gun because I didn't want it to look like every other MG100 out there. I wanted to use earth tones, yet I also wanted it to stand out. So I wanted to try painting with chameleon colors or the color shift. I thought about using a reptile kind of pattern, but I think with the different color change, I didn't want it to be too busy. I first thought about using a logo, but then I decided it was probably just too much, so I declined to do that. So one of the first things you want to do is dismantle your gun. You want to be taking out all the parts that you don't want paint on. So a big part of this is just disassembling your marker. The next part of preparing the parts that you want to paint is cleaning it. What I recommend is just washing it with some basic dish soap and a stiff brush. What you're doing is removing the sealant and the coating on the plastic. Every piece of plastic has kind of a release agent when it pops out of the mold. Now, that also helps it get out of the mold. The downside is if that is still on it, the paint won't stick as well. The other part is if you've used your paintball gun and you have paint splatter on it, you obviously want to get that out because that will interfere with the paint attaching to the plastic. After you've already scrubbed it clean, got all the parts, then you want to sit and let it dry. If there are parts of your gun that you do not want to get wet and washed and scrubbed up, the other thing you can do is use rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol will eat away at that coating on there. You just want to make sure you scrub really good. The other thing I noticed is, at least with the pads that I use, it left some lint. So then I used kind of a microfiber or lint-free um, rag and cleaned that up. Because again, I didn't want those little particles in there when I did the spray painting. Now with my MG100, one thing I did is I reassembled the shell back together. The reason I did this is because when I get to the painting part, I wanted to make sure that when I painted, put on, when I painted and that I put on the primer and I did all that, that it covered up the, the bolt heads. And also that because the bolts were in it also protected the threading in there. This is because if I'm doing this nice paint job, the one thing I didn't want was these chrome bolts shining out. Once all your parts are clean, the next thing you want to do is taping. Tape every single place where you do not want the paint to go. It's super important because if you slack on this, it's much harder to get paint off parts once it already has been painted. So here, I taped the bottom and the top of the magazine. What I did is I want to make sure that there was no dark showing when I clipped in the magazine. Now with painting the trigger and the receiver here, I used a paper towel um, to cover some of the internals just because the tape wouldn't get down in there and completely block it. But I use the towel because usually that's a great way um, to pick up kind of any overspray. I didn't want any paint getting on the grip, so I just used some basic printer paper to help kind of block out some of the bigger parts where I did not want paint to land. I added these kind of paper chef hats to the magazines. This allowed me to be able to pick them up from the top there 
um, and spray paint without actually having to get fingerprints onto the magazine. When you're painting your gun, I highly recommend that you use a primer. A primer is a paint color plus an adhesion agent. Now an adhesion agent is really just glue. So what it means is you're spray painting a color plus a glue. The reason you do this is because once you put on your primer, whatever colors you're gonna put on next are much more likely to connect and bond to the, your gun. This is really important because you don't want your paint flaking off, you don't want it chipping off, you don't want it rubbing off. You also don't wanna to have to redo this often. So a lot of times this primer will help you down the line. I do want to say I did not like this primer only because with the trigger it always held some residue in it and would create this splatter effect. Um, this means that when I wanted to spray the primer over the objects I had to keep spraying. Otherwise if I stopped and restarted a lot of times it would create these bubbles and splatter effects. Now with the color shift, you especially want to make sure that you shake the can because the shimmer components are usually going to be settling down in the bottom. And so you want to make sure you break those loose. And so throughout the spraying, you're going to be shaking your can just to keep that agitated. I am going to apologize because it's very hard to hold the camera and spray paint at the same time. I have to say that I was very impressed with using the color shift paint. It was very smooth, it didn't blob up as much. I had expected it to actually be more of a hassle than what it really was. So when I sprayed the body of the MG100, I had it hanging from a tree because I wanted to make sure that the paint colors were consistent all around it. Now that I had all the parts painted, it was time to reassemble. It's important to make sure that you let the paint dry for at least 24 hours. I have to admit that I got really impatient after about nine hours and tried to handle it and unfortunately got a one or two smudges or fingerprints into it, which I wasn't happy about. So please be more patient than I was and give it the full 24 hours to cure before you start handling it. You can see that because I had spray painted with the bolts on it, it helped color the bolts rather than having them stand out as chrome. Removing all the tape and the paper kind of reminded me of Christmas. I also put on these Picatinny rail guards partly because I, it's covering the parts that are most likely to scrape off or to rub off. With the final product, I'm really impressed with how it turned out. I am very happy with how it looks, the color, the tones. Um, this was awesome. I would definitely do it again. And it was easier than I thought and cheaper than I thought. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to bringing this out in the field. I hope this answered your questions. I hope you get excited about this and I hope you have a chance to do this yourself with some of your markers. Um, if you do, hey, please post it, please show it. I would really like to see the kind of different color shift paints you do on your marker. And thanks for watching.